John. Thank you for uh, sitting down with me, Mr. Lefty. Glad to be here, Kevin. <laughs> Glad All right. you're here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so drug addicts, single women with children, inmates, these were your students. But uh, where in this, the course of your career did this come? After I had retired from public education, when we were together in the classroom in 2004, 2003, excuse me, I went to um, just a part-time job working at Armstrong World Industries in their lab area. And I was there for 18 months figuring that's what I'm going to do to fill my <laughs> retirement time. And then I got a call from uh, the Lancaster Lebanon Intermediate Unit which does special ed programs mm -hmm. that regular districts can't provide. And it was to teach in the Lancaster County Prison. Well, I was totally <laughs> baffled by that even call. And then... Why were you why Well, were I you guess baffled? that was the last thing I was ever expecting. You know, the fact that I was even thought of. But it was by another teacher who was retiring mm -hmm. and another teacher that he had talked to who I guess knew that I was maybe available. Yeah. And um, so I felt I should give it a try, and I'm totally convinced that this was providence. I mean, all of my experiences and changes, I can be sure that it was providence in my life. What do you mean by providence? I'm just saying the hand of God, if I can put it that simply. So I was just led and in between time, filling time until I got the message that, not thinking of it that way, but looking back, I know that's what changed in my life. You know, I was never on a goal-focused uh, agenda. Yeah. Like in this many years, I'm going to do this. By this <laughs> many years, I'm going to have that. And um, I just know that's what evolved, in spite of me. You know, so. It was meant to be, not because of me, and it happened. And, and so when you say providence and you say that with all of your experiences backing mm -hmm. that up, what, what do you mean by, what experiences are you drawing upon? Your time in the public school and the private schools? Private or? school, every, everything in my life. I mean, that's, that's the basic uh, understanding and belief that I have. So take us back to the first day that you, you got there. What were your expectations? Well, uh, getting into the prison would have been the first challenge. Going to figure out how do you, how does one from the outside just get in? So I had to go through a simple clearance, and uh, I was already cleared by the inside teacher that was going to let me visit for a day. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, just identified myself, and I was escorted in and up to the education wing in the prison, and um, met with the person who was going to retire, who had invited me, and uh, waited till the students came. And, and I what, guess what were you anticipating these students I had students no idea. I mean, I guess maybe something to be a little apprehensive, you know, prisoners are there because they violated the law. But these were women in mm -hmm. the GED program, and they were there by invitation. Um, they made, uh, excuse me, they made an application, and then they had to be invited to come to class. So these were motivated? Yeah, I would have to say capacity. that. Yeah, they might have had different reasons for their mm -hmm. motivation. It was a nice place to spend a couple hours out of the prison time during the day. And uh, it was a very civilized setting compared to in a cell block with a hundred women. Yeah. Going crazy and <laughs> Was that somewhat out. what you were thinking you were going to get into? or? I, I guess I just, I went in there just kind of with a blank slate, mm -hmm. not knowing what to expect. I, I don't think I had any preconceived notions other than just, how do they do, run this place? You know? <laughs> and I remember years ago, I had a neighbor, a great guy, who uh, got in trouble for drunken driving, and he was in prison in Lancaster County. And I went to visit him, and it was before they finished the new wing where I will be teaching, mm -hmm. or taught, and uh, you know, this was behind glass and uh, talking on a phone to a, an inmate, and um, of course he was only there temporarily, he wasn't a criminal, he just was a drunk driver, and did some property damage. So that was 
my only experience with the prison world. But inside, it was very civilized in the wing where the education facility is. I hadn't been to the cell blocks yet, so I did, didn't know what to. Did expect. you? Was that? Did you eventually go to the cell blocks? Was oh, that yes, a day? Yeah. yeah, cell blocks would have been a daily routine oh. visit for me to either pick up the women. Oh, so you actually had to go in and. In the beginning, them. yes, that changed near the end when they had other restructuring of yeah. rules and so forth. So. Um, so what was that experience so, like going in to actually get to them? Uh, it was eye-opening because there you are on a two-tiered cell block, 100 women mm -hmm. uh, being yelled at by the CO because that's what they would hear. They didn't hear just general <laughs> instructions. And uh, so they had to be <laughs> vocally urged to, if they were coming out for a different uh, routine education classes or visitation, uh, chapel visits, mm -hmm. or uh, infirmary visits. So they're not motivated very much for the most part. So how did you, being a white older gentleman, connect with, mm -hmm. were they largely uh, Hispanic racial minorities? Uh, in the beginning, yes, I'm trying to think. I think um, the majority in the first group that I encountered were minorities. There might have been out of eight women, two that were Caucasian. But it was like love at first sight, if I can say that. For you? For me and I think for this group of women. Why would you say that? Because they were expect they knew that there was going to be a replacement. Mm -hmm. And I guess I might have had just enough friendly appearance <laughs> that uh, they didn't fear me. And uh, we just bonded from the beginning. So, I never felt like an outsider, especially when I took over after the gentleman left. So aside from being a very friendly per person, which I know you are, um, what other ways were you able to connect with them and sort of bridge what would be perceived, at least from an outsider, mm -hmm. as a very large barrier between two people? Well, I guess for some, if I knew where they were from and I knew where they all were from, you know, I would have something to relate to. I knew the area locally. Plus, I had a couple ladies from Philadelphia, which is my birthplace. Mm. So that was a great connection. Um, and that seemed to work. So we just had connections of where we lived. And yeah. you said you also, you at least mentioned in the past, that you've used diabetes as a means of connecting with? Yes, because uh, I eventually would meet a few gals who were type 1 diabetics. Like yourself? Yes, and that was just instant bonding because <laughs> uh, we could really talk seriously and I was very uh, focused on how they were being cared for and wasn't always what I would have considered the best of care but at least they were taken care of. So was there ever a day that was, you've explained that there were lots of good experiences, lots mm -hmm. of instant bonding, were there any really bad days in your time there? Um, the only one time that I had a discipline problem, and it was only discipline related to an attitude, mm. um, was a gal who I had a couple times already, and that was the first thing I had to get used to. Women come to prison, women leave prison. Women come back to prison, and that routine isn't unusual. What? So they usually break their parole, their parole violations, or PVs, as it a term that I had to get used to, what, mm -hmm. what's the language. So there was a lot of parole 